in the world today. Protecting our country's borders is vital. It is seen as a gateway to the UK. These are the men and women in uniform, responsible for safeguarding Ireland's borders. Stopping. Look at me, behind the yellow line. Searching. Have you been stopped at a checkpoint before? We just listen to me, we just listen to me. And seizing. Drugs, arms and illegal goods. If anyone tries to harm me, that dog will tear them to shreds. Saving lives. Oh, I'd say about 200 kilometres per hour. And protecting Ireland's inhabitants and millions of visiting tourists. You could have been here a hundred times. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get in the hundred and first time. They police the ports. But you have to make sure that definitely no, nobody will need a vehicle. The airports. Why did you tell me you weren't working? And the roads. These are very badly damaged straps. If you can't drive the truck, shouldn't be on the road. These are the border interceptors. Coming up, a roadside stop reveals an unexpected haul of goods. Did you have receipts for all this stuff that you just purchased? You know what's even in your car? Without any paperwork to confirm his story, it's looking like a long one-way trip for this Indian family. You're supposed to have that to present to me also. That way I know you're actually married to this person and a high-speed chase for a wanted vehicle. At Dublin Airport, Immigration Officer Ray Flannery is on the non-EU desk. His job is to check every passenger that arrives from outside the European Union has the correct paperwork to enter the country. An Indian man has approached the desk with his young daughter. The man has a visa to enter Ireland, but Officer Flannery is doing a final check before letting the man and his daughter into the country. You're coming here first time to join your spouse. Do you have her details? Her details? Her details? Yes. Well, she's working with her. I need her details. I have no idea who she is. You have to provide details to me. I don't have anything else. Well, how do I know you're coming to them? You should have her G and IB number. Address. Without any paperwork, Officer Flannery can't confirm the man's story. The man desperately searches his phone for information, but at the moment it's not looking good for him and his daughter. You should have a letter of invitation. That way I will know who you're coming to. The man hands over his phone with what he says is a photo of his wife's immigration permit. You're supposed to have all this printed. I have no idea who you're coming to. It's common sense. But his lack of any physical paperwork is a problem. Like I have no, do you have a marriage cert? A marriage cert? Where? You're supposed to have that to present to me also. That way I know you're actually married to this person. You should have them with me, because if I refuse your permission to come in, they're no good to you. You need to have all that now. It's not looking good for the man. If he can't convince Officer Flannery his story checks out, he may not be let into the country. Like that photograph could be of anybody. I have no proof. What's her name? My name is Prince No, what's her name? Simple Elizabeth Any, any idea where she lives, her dress? Where is she working? She's working for a mountain residential. Nice. Officer Flannery continues to quiz him. Is that her? Yes. Happy his story checks out, he finally allows the man and his daughter entry, but on condition he produces the required paperwork. Well, you must go to the local police in Mooncoin or Kilkenny, wherever your wife registered with her, bring all your documents, marriage, everything, okay, within three months. Yes, sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Generally, people will have documentation, but unfortunately, a lot of the time, this documentation is presented to a relevant embassy in order to get a visa and to forget to get a second copy to show us here. 
they presume once they have the visa then everything is okay, they can just come in. But we will do a double check just to make sure they are who they say they are and coming to join who they say they're coming to join. Today, patrolling the roads around Dublin, including major access routes to the airport and the port, are Garda traffic officers Paddy McElroy and Mark Fay. In their unmarked car, they're keeping a low profile but expert eye out for any suspicious activity. And it's not long before they pulled over a vehicle that's pinged up on their ANPR system. It's suspected that it's involved in crime, yeah. So are you in shopping? Officer McElroy's suspicions are immediately aroused by the car's very full boot. Would you have receipts for all this stuff that you just purchased? What? No, we didn't just purchase no, it was in the car, wait. We got all this stuff here, when was all this stuff bought? Well, it's in the car, I couldn't tell you, we're three year homeless, so we're going out. But all that stuff looks relatively new, if you don't mind me asking. No, because we're getting the house to this week, and The woman's vague and evasive answers aren't helping her case. Basically, at this moment of time, the woman can't account for some of the stuff that she has in the boots in terms of providing documentary evidence of purchase. If it's the case whereby the, the items are stolen, she could be prosecuted for theft if found to be that, or if it's the case whereby she is handing stolen property as Ezekiel's, if not more, of an offence. Over half a billion euros worth of stock is stolen every year from retailers in Ireland, some of it immediately heading out of the country. Where are those clothes from? Gun stores. Right, I'm just going to take that bag up for a second. Okay? I want to have a look at that for a second. You said your mother purchased this book. Yeah, that's it. it turns out officers Faye and McElroy have every reason to suspect this woman. She's already known to the Garda as actively being involved with stolen goods. And the contents of her boot look highly suspicious. When did you, when, when did you buy that? Ma, Kathleen, you'd, no, you'd know. You didn't hold it when you put it in your car, the next thing. I, I don't want to put it in my car. If you purchased this, be, if you purchased this, I don't want to take it. Why would I want to take it if you purchased it? It turns out this car is full of new household I items. The Hoover. When did you buy that? The Ashburn Market. The Ashburn Market. Yeah. How much paper? I'm sure. The George Foreman in the back. You're not backing it up these purchases with the seats to say you own it. There's all, two, all new stuff in it. What's in behind this seat? What's in underneath there? Do you know what's even in your car? You've got loads of new items in your car. You've no bags in them, you've no receipts in them. You can't tell me exactly where you bought them. Unhappy with the woman's inability to provide proof of purchase, Officer McElroy finally decides he has no other course of action. No. Tell me what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Hoover, Hoover. the George Foreman, the drone. The drone. I'm going to leave all the smaller bits. I'm going to take, take, the going to take the shoes out of River Island and you're going to prove to me that you purchased them. Can you do that for me? And if you, if you prove that you purchased all them, I'll give them back to you straight away. If the woman can't prove she purchased the item seized, she's looking at a date in court and possible jail time as a repeat offender. Particularly if Officer McElroy turns up evidence the items are stolen. All right. For now, the woman is allowed on her way, but with a significantly lighter car. Oh, there's all barcodes on them, there's all tags on them. So we'll approach the relevant stores and ask them, see can they give us any information and shed any light on this investigation. Back at Dublin Airport, Detective Garda Ray Flannery is processing passengers at the non-EU desk. How are you? Hi, girl. Thank you. He needs to see a passport and potentially a visa and paperwork before he lets any passenger into the country. Now, the maximum we allow any non-EU national to stay here is 90 days. If they have a reason to extend past that and a valid reason, they will then go to the local immigration officer and look for permission to extend past 90 days. Now, why are you here? I live here. Are you living here? Yeah. Do you have a GNIB card? Yeah. The GNIB card which was recently replaced by the Irish resident permit, allows non-EU citizens to stay and work in Ireland beyond 90 days. What do you do here? Are you working here? Yeah, I'm working. Where? Deep in Gallipoli.
Lovely. Thank you. The next passenger at Officer Flannery's booth is also looking to stay in Ireland beyond 90 days. Now, how long will you stay here? Um, that's three years, three years now. You're living here? Yeah. GNIB card. The woman struggles to find her immigration card to prove she should be allowed back into the country. And when she does, there's an issue. It's expired. Yeah, it has expired when I was still there. I have to change it, and again, I have to change my same name because I'm married here. You got married when? Two weeks ago. Oh, but my oh, husband yeah. flew back. He flew back? Yeah, he flew back. Why? Is he not living Last here? Yes. Is he not living here? He is. Yeah. He's actually on that side. He's waiting for us. Oh, he flew back here? Yeah, he flew back here. Because I had some things to sort out before I leave. Her condition had expired. She had left here before re-registering. But while she was away, back in her home country, she had remarried. And who's Moses? Moses is my ex-husband. Ex-husband? Yeah, ex-husband. So she's now coming in to re-register. She's a child here as well with her. So she was given 90 days to go back and re-register. People re-register every single year. So we know exactly what people are doing. The system has to be updated constantly. Happy her story checks out, Officer Flannery allows the woman entry. Now, you must go and re-register within three months. You need to bring your new uh, marriage cert and all your details again. Back to, to the office in city centre. Okay, yeah. Right? yeah, Berkey, yeah. yeah. We hold on to this card because it's expired, OK? Uh, you're holding it? Yeah, once it's expired, we hold on to it. Maybe I'm going to need it. You won't need it. It's expired, so it's no good. OK. So you can tell them in, in Borkey that it's been retained here, okay. if they ask. It will cost the woman 300 euros to re-register. But she'll then be allowed to stay in Ireland for another 12 months. Back on patrol around Dublin Airport with officers McElroy and Fay. They don't get far before they're called into action. It's a warning for a um, suspicious vehicle. Hitting the blues and twos, the officers race to the nearby location of the suspicious vehicle. It's not long before they spot the car and pull it over. Officer Fay now needs to find out if everything is above board with this vehicle and its driver. I'm just having a gander at the car. Just, have, just having a look to see. And it's your brother's, your, your brother's vehicle, is it? Yeah. Do you have the insurance cert with you, or just the, the, just the documentation this way? In, no, but I just reduced the last Oh, did you? All yeah. oh, right, if you reduce it, well, then I won't make another producer off you, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, has it. In fairness, Oddly, obviously it would be. Yeah. Uh, this is your current address, is it? Yeah, yeah. So, all right, most... Although the man doesn't have the car's insurance certificate on him, he claims to have recently shown police the original copy. Right, well, shall we just see if there's any recent DLIPs there, please? Having confirmed the man is telling the truth, Officer Fay returns to the car. Yeah, you produced there on the, the 4th of July, you did. And nice, yeah. You don't have anything in the car, you shouldn't have in the car, do you? No, I think so, no. Yeah. No. I'm asking if you, are, no. if you mind me searching. No, I've been at home. Uh, your father's in hospital. Yeah. Look, I do appreciate you, what's call it. So far, it may be suspicious, day, right. but because the driver's documents are all in order well, and he's given no, no indication of committing a crime, he's entitled to refuse I'm Officer Faye's request. Okay. If you're in difficulty or whatever else, that's fair enough. I says, I fully appreciate it. Yeah. I says, I'll mark it down on the system that get that. But it's flagging up for whatever reason, are we? The officers allow the vehicle to go. But next time, this driver might not be so lucky. In Granard, County Longford, road safety investigator Jim Fleming, working with the police, has set up a checkpoint on a main road running to the border with Northern Ireland. 
with Ireland exporting around 340 million euros worth of forestry products every year, cross-border wood trucking is big business. How are we getting on? How are we doing? Today, Jim and his team are doing spot checks to make sure these trucks and their drivers are following safety and security regulations. Do you want to have a look at your taco, please? The taco graph will tell Jim details of how fast, how far, and how long the vehicle has been driven. While the data downloads, he takes a look at the driver's card, which keeps a record of the specific driver's data. A commercial driver is allowed to do a maximum of 90 hours in any two-week period, and a maximum of 10 hours in any one day. Drivers face a fine of 5,000 euros for breaking the rules. The data on the card makes for shocking viewing for Jim. The driver card in this case is showing that um, back at the beginning of May, he was walking for a period of 102 hours. Well, obviously, he can't be walking for four days. If you were to be working for 102 hours and seven minutes without a break, that would be quite serious. But in this case, it's just the card is in the machine and the machine thinks he's working. It's clearly not correct. You were off there uh, last week, were you? Or yeah. first, from yeah. the first, your, uh, your tackle was that other work for four days. When you reject the card, then it closes off your mileage reading, your odometer readings then for that day. Probably the best practice is to eject it and put it back in again, you know. Having advised the trucker about his driver's card, Jim checks the TACO data. It's also flagged an infringement. The maximum daily driving time is 10 hours. Uh, There's a day here where you could drive for 10 hours and, one, and two minutes. The regulations are the regulations, so if somebody's driving for 10 hours and two, it'll flag it up as a minor infringement. Jim considers the nature of the offence, and given how minor it is, uses his discretion. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. On this occasion, there's a verbal reprimand before the driver is allowed to be on his way. There are approximately 350,000 goods vehicles on the road in Ireland, travelling between borders and from coastal ports to airports. Yeah, that's fine. Road Safety Authority vehicle inspector Tommy Wright is conducting roadside checks on HGVs, using the roads leading north to the border. The Road Safety Authority have developed a simple vehicle walk-around checklist to assist drivers in carrying out inspections of their own vehicles. After being pulled over for an on-the-spot inspection, this trucker is about to get the full RSA treatment. Have you been stopped at a checkpoint before? Not yet. OK, we'll do lights, front and back, track to unit and trailer, and I'll have a walk around. The check is now a legal requirement before taking the vehicle on the road. And it's going to be very easy for the inspector to see if it's been completed or not. OK, give the steering wheel a good shake for me, yeah? Press down the foot brake. The other way. Approximately 10% of all collisions are caused by vehicle defects. So it's important for the safety of everyone using Ireland's roads that the vehicles are maintained properly and that the drivers themselves know what issues to look out for. That's the steering column coming down that the driver has the steering wheel. And if you look down there, it's the steering box. And it's, it's uh, power assisted, like, so it's filled with fluid. A lot of the time, the top seal gives problems and it leaks. See the, see the oil? Do you know your steering box is leaking fairly bad? You have to topen it up. Do you know it's leaking? Have you reported it? Well, have you written down then? He also needs to check the cab from collecting tachograph data to sounding the horn. Horn. Is the horn working, Tommy, is it? When was it working? It was working yesterday. You checked it today, like? I didn't check it today, no. Well, are you wearing that seatbelt? Yes, sir. I had that on. It's not pushing back in that well, like? Why have you it like that then? I just had like some, I like some loose. But sure, it's no good, like. <laughs> if you're involved in an accident, like yeah. that's no good to you, like. The check is not going well for this driver, and it gets worse. You have a brake pad indicator light on there, like. Yeah. How long is it like that? That's only just like that, uh, uh, 
the brakes are, are good on it. But That's why you need to have the book. When you see yes, something like yes. with the horn not working or something wrong with the seat belt or you have a fault like that, you need to record it and you need to report it to your boss and see what's happening then. Right. All right, I'll keep looking around. Safety Inspector Wright now takes a look at the truck's tyres, an area where defects have been found to be a major factor in accidents. I'm looking at the tyre, it's on the limits like but uh, it's up at the minute, like, so I'll check to see. It's probably empty, like, and see where he's going and that thing. Having completed all 22 individual checks, Inspector Wright shares the results with the police officer on duty with him, Garda Liam Lawler. Yeah. Seat belt not working. Yeah. Brake pad indicator. They have the power to pull the vehicle off the road and impound it, should it not reach the necessary level of roadworthiness. You know the way you have the circle of the dash wheel. Like, any indication of which brake? No, there's nothing on that. Like, um, and the uh, lift axle. Safety Inspector Wright and Garda Lawler go through the list of faults as they decide how they need to proceed. Uh, the other side, he's amber on both, then for yeah. taco and for roadworthiness. Yeah. All right, Tom. So. You need to get that seatbelt sorted right. so that it's, it's retracting exactly, properly. Yeah. It's important that you sort out what the issue is in relation to the right. brake pad indicator. Get that sorted yeah. before you bring it on the road again. Right. She's empty, the trailer, I yeah. presume, yeah. yeah? So you need to get that tire sorted as well before you put a load on it. Right. So you're, going, you're given the chance to go and get stuff done rather than having someone come out and, and do the stuff here for you. Right. So that's fair enough, isn't it? That's fair enough. Okay, good man. This driver's been lucky. He's able to continue with his journey. He's going on his way with a warning and a list of jobs to complete. And he has 10 days to do it. Is that okay? Good man. Thanks, Tom.